Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And every week I look forward to, to, to see all of you and to hear the testimonies and to, uh, you know, dialogue with you to find out what God is doing in your life. And I know that as you respond to God, He will respond to you and He will touch you in a more special way. Today we're going to talk about favor, but this time we're going to talk about the fresh oil of favor. So, now let's read this verse. One, two, three, go. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. This is only the first section here, but I want to start the Word of God with this verse. This is a very important verse because that Jesus, He Himself, when He came as a Son of Man, He needed the Holy Spirit. He Himself is God. But when He came as a Son of Man, He showed us how as children of God, as men and women of God, we can depend on the Holy Spirit. That's why He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit that will come to assist you, to help you in a ministry. And he says that proclaim to proclaim the good news to the poor. And later on, I shall expound a little bit what you mean by good news to the poor. But when he says that the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me, I want you to know this term here, the Spirit of God and the anointing oil, they are what we call, they are are synonymous in the sense that the anointing oil is a symbol of the Spirit of God. That from antiquity, that every time when the people came before the Lord, they brought before Him oil. They anoint object with oil. They anoint the temple with oil because of the specific instruction that God said, there is that meaning of oil. And I will explain uh, further. All right. So in Old Testament, you find that anointing oil is found 20 times because it's not just pure olive oil. When anointing oil is being mentioned, anointing oil is a special concoction of different spices with olive oil. And you can see that in Exodus 30, it's talking about myrrh, it's talking about the cinnamon, acalamus, cassia, and then, of course, the main ingredient is olive oil. So all these spices are meant to provide the fragrance. They are meant to let you know that when you enter into the presence of God, and if your hand comes in contact with the oil, you are going to be filled with the fragrance of His presence. But of course, the physical sense of fragrance cannot be compared with the spiritual fragrance you are having right now. In fact, in the, the covenant that we have, the new one that we have, you find that we have the fragrance of the Holy Spirit every day of our life. People who walk with the Lord can tell you that when the Holy Spirit is present, there is a particular freshness in the ambience. Am I right? There is a freshness. But when you encounter demonic spirit, you find that there's this oppressive, oppre that the sense of oppression, and there's a particular darkness in your soul when you encounter evil spirit. Therefore, in our church, we do encourage you to get your house being blessed. Means that the pastors, uh, it doesn't just mean me, it means the other pastors, uh, they can go to your house and they can uh, anoint your house with oil. Once again, once you anoint your house with oil, you are telling all passing evil spirit, this house belongs to God. This house is a house of prayer. This house is a house of hope. This is a house where the light of the word of God will shine. And this is where the presence of God is. Therefore, we practice anointing of the home. And you find that olive oil, the primary ingredients, is basically used for light. In the tabernacle, in the temple of the Lord, you find that they have the lampstand. And that lampstand is of no use if there is no olive oil. 
if there is no fuel to bring forth the light. So the whole sanctuary uh, was lighted because the olive oil was used as fuel. So understand here is that you can talk about a Christian life, you can talk about a very spiritual life, but when you are just merely religious and you don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you don't have light. Because the Holy Spirit is given to you so that this sustaining light is always there. That's why be filled with the Holy Spirit. You find in the book of Acts chapter 2, the people were being filled with the Holy Spirit and then full of the Holy Spirit. And yet in Acts chapter 4, the same group of people, they needed the Holy Spirit and they were filled again. The reason why we need the feeling is because we are leaking. All right? Uh, we have so many temptations in the world. Like right now, I'm talking to you. Some of you are not here. You are still somewhere in the world. Yeah? Your body may be here, but your mind may be thinking of something like last night, the durian, uh, that day, the laksa, or something else. So may I ask you to please gather yourself here and focus on the Word of God. Because the things of the world can cause, can puncture holes in your in your buckets all right and so whatever presence the oil flow in or water of the holy spirit now one of the symbols of the holy spirit is water all right so when water come in it will just you know spill out it will just come out of the holes but yet we thank god it's like that even though you have a bucket full of hole but if let's say i take that bucket and i dump into the river then the bucket is full right full of hole but full why because you are being baptized in the holy spirit you see the point here that's why baptism in the holy spirit is like a person being immersed in water the bucket being immersed in water you are full you need that all of us need the holy spirit without the holy spirit you are just playing games you come to church and then you sing two songs you know and you dance a little bit and then you go home and then you say i've been to church Yes, you have been to church, you have been, you know, with the people of God, but you do not encounter God because God's presence is being revealed through the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, the emphasis of the Holy Spirit is to the maximum. You need the Holy Spirit. And so it is also, you find that uh, olive oil is medicinal. It has healing properties. Who will bring healing to your bodies? Some of you here, you are here because you have, you have diseases, you have pain, you have infirmities, and you need healing. May I recommend you the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is a great healer. If you know how to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you don't even need us to lay hands on you. Because the Holy Spirit brings healing. That's why people say, Oh, I pray to the Father, I pray to Jesus. But very seldom you pray to the Holy Spirit. But when you start to pray to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal the presence of Jesus. The Holy Spirit's job is to reveal Jesus, and Jesus' job is to reveal the Father. That's why, but you begin with the Holy Spirit. So that's why we have songs like, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in my heart. You see? As we sing, why? Because the Holy Spirit loves when you sing to Him. Holy Spirit is a person. Some people say, oh, Holy Spirit is a force because you watch too much Star Wars. You are influenced by Hollywood. So there's the force be with you. What kind of force? Right? Please don't get confused. Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit can be grieved. Holy Spirit, He can respond emotionally. So what happened here is that Holy Spirit can have this deep relationship that He wants to build in you so that you will be close to God. So Holy Spirit wants to heal you and you must be open to the Holy Spirit. Do not reject the Holy Spirit. How do we reject the Holy Spirit? It is this way. We do not become, we do not become the champion of His cause. We do not host His presence. In fact, every day I host the presence of the Holy Spirit. When I sit there and write my sermon, the sermon cannot flow until the Holy Spirit touches me. And I want you to do it this way. 
It's not that just because you need to preach, then you need the Holy Spirit. But from now on, I don't even say when I need to preach, then I need the Holy Spirit. But every day when I need to move my hand or move my feet, I need the Holy Spirit. The slightest action, the smallest things that I do, I need the Holy Spirit. That is the kind of desire you must have. That's why this relationship with the Holy Spirit is so deprived by it. It's not that the Spirit doesn't want you. The Spirit wants to fill you. That day I was feeling a flask of water from the tap. And then I put it there and then I turned it on and I went out to do my things. And then in about one minute, I came back and the flask was not filled. The flask was not filled. Why? Because I had misplaced the flask. I have misaligned the, the, the flask. Somehow when I put it, I didn't put it right underneath that tap. I didn't put it underneath that faucet whereby the water would flow into the flask. That's why I can tell you, then from there, the Lord said, ah, I want to show you an illustration. And right there and then, God said, do you know why some of your people, even they come to church every Sunday, they are not filled? It's because their life is not in alignment for the Holy Spirit to flow in. You see the point here? You come in alignment. Alignment, what is the term called alignment? That alignment is called one big word, humility. If you come with pride, then the glorification will be in your flesh. Whatever you do, you glorify in yourself. Oh, I'm so great. I'm so beautiful. I'm so rich. I'm so powerful. You glorify in yourself. But the very moment when you come in alignment and you find that when the Holy Spirit comes in, then you begin to see that you are full of the Holy Spirit and not of yourself. And that you are full of the Spirit, then you find fulfillment. So many Christians here, you, are, you have been Christian for a long time, but you find no fulfillment. I tell you why. A lot has to do with pride. Some people come to me and say, Pastor, I've been Christian for 40 over years. So what? You can stay off alignment. The water can flow for 40 over years. Your flask is still empty. You see the point here? So it's not that Holy Spirit is not going to pour into you, but you are misaligned. You have your own goal, your own vision. You ask God nothing. You say, I know how to live. Instead of knowing I know who I am in the Lord. I am what I am myself. And that's what happened to people who, you see, I've been a pastor for 30 over years. I counsel thousands of people. Why some people fail spiritually is because refuse to, to be humble. Refuse to allow God to take away the bitterness. Refuse to allow God to take away the anger, you know, the pride. Refuse, refuse. Sit there, you know, fold your arm and say, I will not receive the word of God. Now, you will not receive. Everybody will receive except you. And you will go on and say, this church is lousy. I never receive anything. Of course, I can tell you, I can have all the faucet on. But every, when, when your vessel is misaligned, nothing is going to happen. Back to here, it says nutrition. Uh, Olive oil provides nutrition, their food ingredients, and same with the Holy Spirit, is that you can never understand the Word of God until the Holy Spirit opens up your this understanding. That is what the Word of God says. That, that's why I can tell you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they can read the Torah, they can read the Word of God, but they do not understand. They cannot understand. They can read, it's, it's like printed words or uh, with, with ink on, 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 on paper, but they cannot understand. Are you like that? How many of you say, oh, pastor, you know, every time when I read the Bible, I fall asleep. You know why you fall asleep? You haven't asked the Holy Spirit. That's why. You ask Pastor Grace, you ask me, you ask Pastor Carlson. Oh, that's not Pastor Carlson. <laughs> I thought Pastor Carlson is playing. Ah, Pastor Carlson is here. Right? When we read the Bible, we never get sleepy. In fact, we get more excited, especially you ask Pastor Ashok. Right? He's dancing when he's reading the Bible. Because, am I right? Sister Elizabeth, huh? yeah. 
Yeah. It's not because of the chapati in the kitchen. It's the food, the spiritual food. How many of you actually, when you read the word of God, right? The word of God jump at you, it leap at you, right? You must experience that. I tell you, praise God, because the Holy Spirit causes the word to become alive. Today, if the word of God is dead to you, it's because you are dead to the word. Let me say this again. Today, if the word of God is dead to you, it's because you are dead to the word. You are not alive. You don't have the spirit of God. That's why it's dead, it's dead, it's dead. I can assure you, the only way that you can do is seek the spirit of God. And suddenly there's a spiritual hunger and you want to read the word of God. And the Holy Spirit also, in this symbol of the, of the olive oil, is beauty, moisturizer. You put olive oil, you know. So all of you ladies, no need to buy all those expensive cosmetics. Olive oil will do. Alright? Some of you put coconut oil. You smell bad, but it still helps, yeah? But olive oil will do. Because the Holy Spirit comes, and you know what the Holy Spirit does? When the devil tells you that you are most ugly, the devil tells you that you are horrible, you know, you are full of bitterness and you are full of this ugliness inside you. You know what's going to happen? The Holy Spirit is going to tell you, put me on. Put me on. Apply me. Apply me into your life. And then the beauty will come. Later on, you will hear that word called, from ashes, he bring forth beauty. All right? So this is what the Holy Spirit can do. So here Jesus, he continued the second part. He said, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, what is going to happen? These, are, these will be the things that will happen here. You are going to go to those who are poor in the spirit. This is not talking about poor in the wallet. Some people are very rich in the wallet. The bank account is overflowing. All right? But in the spirit, they are crying out. You know why people who are, you know, those famous actors, you know, they look so handsome and so beautiful, right? Bank account, you know, packed with dollars, but yet they kill themselves. You know why they kill themselves? I tell you why. Because the things that they expected to give them fulfillment, and when those things couldn't give them fulfillment, it became a disappointment. See the point? Means you are saying, I think one day I'll be so rich like Bill Gates, or oh, no need to be Bill Gates, like Bill Window also can. <laughs> then I will be happy. Oh, you can be Bill Window, but you won't be happy. All right? You will never be happy. Yeah? Or oh, one day if I can be as handsome as uh, the young Chow Wen Fat. Uh, now, 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 now. The child in fact, not so handsome really. But last time he was very handsome, right? And wow, if I can be like him, I will be very happy. So you go for plastic surgery until you look like plastic, huh? but you won't be happy. When you have everything in life and all these temporal things cannot fill the vacuum in your life, I tell you the dis disappointment is going to be so great. And that's why you will just say, life is not worth living. People don't understand we are created as a spirit with the body, not a body with a spirit. It's the spirit with the body. And the emphasis is upon your spirit. If you know the secret of life, you will emphasize on eternity. There is eternity within your spirit. Am I right? Now, you can be like my age, right? I'm, this year I'll be 64. No, yet I'm 63. But every year I'm 25, okay? So please. I'll be 64 in September. And every year it will come so fast. But I tell you, in my spirit, there is eternity. Amen. Because we live forever. That's why some of you, you may look old, but inside you are very young. Some of you are too young that you are so naive. Uh, so immature. 
right? You can be 50 and still throw tantrum, like baby, like that. Yeah, you are very, very young. Eternity in your spirit. Take care of that. Take care of that spirit, because that spirit will live forever. That spirit will live forever. The spirit wants to worship God. The spirit wants to be free. It says here to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Not talking about the prison, the prisoner, you know, in Sungai Bulo prison or whatever. No, 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 no. It's talking about spiritually in bondage. Some of you are in habits that you cannot break. Some young people are watching pornography and you cannot break. Some of you are habitual gossiper. Any story given to you can become, you know, extended, expanded, and exaggerated. Very scary. Cannot tell you anything. Right? And some of you here, you, you don't have freedom because of certain relationship. Certain people are binding you up. And you are so afraid to lose that person. And so you become in bondage. The relationship is not healthy. It's a bondage. And Jesus said, when the Spirit comes, when the Spirit comes, freedom. It's freedom. Give a lot of clap offering. Praise God. Today you have freedom. Amen. To recover the sight of the blind. Spiritually, blindness is worse. Jesus always said, those who have eyes to hear, let them hear. You got eyes. I mean eyes to see, not, not hear. Eyes to see, let them see. Ear to hear, let them hear. Why? You got eyes, you got ear. How come you can't see? How come you can't can hear? Because you see, spiritually, you are deaf or spiritually, you are blind. That's why he said, recover the sight of the blind and to set the oppressed free. If you are oppressed by situations, some of you are so controlled by your environments. You are so controlled by your fear. You fear you have no money. You fear you have no health. You fear that one day you will die. You fear that one day your son will leave you. You fear that one day your wife will leave you or your husband will leave you. You live in perpetual fear. But when you come to Jesus and you are led by the Holy Spirit, you know what's going to happen? All those fear no more. So those who have been oppressed by fear, you'll be set free. Go ahead and give a lot of clap offering because I want you to know, receive it, receive it. This is the word of God to you. And it says here that when you are filled with the Spirit, like Jesus, the man of the Spirit, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, so what is the meaning of the year of the Lord's favor? Praise God. I want to clap. <laughs> what is the meaning of of proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. And I want you to look into Isaiah chapter 61, which is here. Now, what is proclaiming the Lord's favor is that to comfort all those who are mourning. If you have a particular grief in your heart that you haven't solved, and you are trying humanly to solve, don't try it. Go to the Holy Spirit. Go to the Holy Spirit. He has a particular favor for you that He's going to set you and put you into that consolation. He's going to help you that your mourning shall turn into joy. And that's why He say He gives beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning. One thing about the Holy Spirit is that He gives the law of reversal. If you are writing down notes, write this down. Law of reversal. You'll reverse Reverse any bad things the devil is putting into your life. Some of you are saying, Oh, Pastor, I'm feeling very sick. I, 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 I have all this stuff. Fear no more. Fear no more. Infirmities are not in control of you. Holy Spirit is in control of you. All right? So, he said, The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. What is the garment of praise? When your spirit is heavy, how do you praise? The praise can only come supernaturally. That's why you are natural. But when you start to walk in the natural, you find that nothing is going to happen. You will continue to feel the heaviness. You will continue to be frustrated. You will continue to lose. You are like living like a loser. 
But today God says to you, I declare to you, you are a victor. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. Now, what spirit is the fiercest spirit in the whole universe? The most awesome and fiercest and most fearsome spirit, I tell you, is the Holy Spirit. It's not any other spirit. Some of you are afraid of all kinds of spirit, whatever, kong. all this spirit, you know, you are so afraid. And so that's why you go to Bomo and you go to all these rich doctors and shaman and all that, because you are afraid. But I tell you, go to the Holy Spirit. He is the creator spirit. He's bigger than all the other spirit. The day when I give my life to Jesus Christ, my mother went to the temple, to the Kun Yam Miu in Singapore, in Changi. At Changi, there, there was then a very famous medium. And the medium was very accurate. And so my mom thought that if she could give me something to eat, like burn some, you know, of those paper, yellow paper, and so let me drink that I will be reverted back to Taoism or Buddhism and so on. And so she went with my aunt. And then the medium started to jump, 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 jump. That's what my aunt told me. I haven't seen it, but my aunt told me. My aunt brought news back to me. And she said, Wow, Albert, your God, huh? Really big, oh. Even the Kunyam Miu, huh? the medium say, I cannot touch him. His God is very big, oh. Give the Lord a big clap offering, praise God. Hallelujah. If you believe it, you receive it. If you believe it, that God is yours. That God is not going to deny you. You see the point here? Because He's a creator God. Who is greater than the creator God? And that creator God say, I will make your body the temple. I will come and live inside you. Wow. That's why you see, we can cast out evil spirit. Evil spirits look at us and they, you know, they want to run away. Why? Because we have the most fearsome spirit. How many of you watched that, that little video about the little bear and the mountain lion? Have you watched that one? Huh? Haven't watched, huh? Maybe next week I'll show you. Huh? The mountain lion wanted to eat the little bear because the little bear was careless and he ventured away from his, uh, his father actually because the mother had died and so he was living with the father. So the father bear of course was a huge guy. But then he ventured away and then the mountain lion wanted to make a feast out of him and began to chase him. And in the video, I don't know how they did it, but they videoed him, you know, he was being chased. And then he fell into the river and the mountain lion came after him. And then he cling on to like a piece of log and then he climbed back. And the mountain lion was so near and began to scratch him. And so he got blood all over his face. And suddenly something stirred inside him. And he stood up. Instead of a, a, a squeaking, you know, and, and, and meowing like a cat, he stood up and began to roar. roar. And he roared and he roared. And the mountain lion suddenly ran away. Ran away, you know. And the mountain lion said, Maybe I have to go and see a doctor now. I got to go. So he ran away. And the camera panned to the back of the bear. And there was the father bear. Roar. And that roar was in the midst of the roar of the father bear. You understand? So the mountain lion saw the father bear, but not... The mountain lion is never afraid of that small bear. Same, Satan is not afraid of you. If you are walking alone, all by myself, you are dead dark. All by myself, you are roasted goose. You are, I tell you. I am not so stupid. I walk with God. I walk with Father Bear. You understand? That when I roar, the devil will see behind me is Father Bear. Behind me is my Father in heaven. Inside me is the Holy Spirit. You understand? That's why learn spirit. You see, spiritual life is not that you be holy, holy, righteous, and then you walk around like, you know, ooh. Some of you are very scary. You, you come to church, ooh. 
you look like some mystical monk or something like that. And then you talk with a very soft voice. Oh, God love you. <laughs> you scare me, man. Right? Please don't be so religious. Huh? We are human beings, yeah? But we are filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen? And then I said, that's why he says that when you start to praise God, praise, right? Garment of praise. If your spirit of heaviness, it shall be gone. It shall be gone. And then you may be called trees of righteousness. The righteousness is not yours. It belongs to Jesus. Every time when I don't have righteousness, I go to Jesus. Some of you, you try to dig up your righteousness. Your whole garden can be dark. There's no righteousness in your garden. There's no righteousness anywhere in your house. You can, you can ramage the, 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 all the drawers. No righteousness in all the, all the cupboards. The only righteousness you can find is Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit will lead you. Later on you find the Holy Spirit will guide you so that you can become the person that God wants you to be. And He said, the planting of the Lord that He may be glorified. Not you, but He. Because every time you do well, He is being praised. Every time when you walk in the way of the Lord, the name of the Lord. That's why you, you find the Bible say, glorify God, glorify God in your life. How to glorify God? By living a life that when people look at you, people can see that there is God in you. Alright? And then they will glorify God. Do you think that you can glorify God if you go to the market and then you scold people? Huh? Tupi ah! Don't know how to rap, is it? Ah, praise Jesus. When, you're, when your character is so nasty, when you're always spewing up filthy words against your wife or your husband, all right? Or you always run down your husband. He is so stupid, one, you know. Huh? He's not as smart as my father. No. There was one lady who kept te telling me, this, I tell you, I usually quite patient as a pastor. So I will listen. Ha, ha, ha. And she kept spewing out these obnoxious words about her husband. Her husband was one of the best hairstylists in Singapore. All right? One of the top. And he fixed the hairs of queens. All right? Queen Elizabeth and all this stuff. Kind of and they would call him to fix hair. And this lady can come to my office and complain about her husband being stupid and say that it's not like her father. Her father was a tycoon, of course. Her father was a great businessman. But you see, her father got a different talent. Her husband got a different gift. You understand? But instead of honoring and respecting that gifts, began to compare. Oh, you know, you're not like my father. Until one day, I said, look here. Why don't you marry your father? <laughs> yeah, I was so mad. I was like, because how can you... When people are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they start to be tempted by the evil spirit. And the evil spirit will only bring out the ugly things. Okay? My wife never say, I am too short. Even though I'm shorter than her. Right? Every time we take pictures, she was, she was trying to stand, stand one step below. So in picture, I look very tall. She make me look good. If you want your husband, <laughs> give a lot of clap for it. <laughs> Woo! I tell you, that is important. Man is not like woman. Some of you women confuse us uh, to be women. We are not. You see, we don't respond to this lovey-dovey stuff, you know. Oh, honey, I love you, I love you, I love you. Eee. I shiver. Men, we respond to respect. Amen? Amen? Amen. To honour. In front of people, you don't run us down. Hey, why are you so blur? Huh? My husband is so stupid, what do you know? Uh, so blur, blur. You know? Every time you complain about your husband, one day no husband. Yeah. Because you see, you wonder why you know that woman in the office, right? I'm not saying that this should happen, but it happens. That this girl who worked with this, your husband, you know, and, and, and then that girl looks so ugly and you are so gorgeous. And yet the husband can leave you to go to that girl. You say, You never wear your glasses. That is because I tell you why. You don't know how to respect. Every day that this guy goes to office and that, that girl will stand there and say, 
Coffee? They serve coffee. What can I do for you? And then you go home and then when, when you reach, reach home and then you say, Come to find me, yeah? Why you come back so late? Huh? What happened? You keep cursing him. You think he wants to come home? Hey, be wise, uh, be filled with the Spirit of God. Because when you are filled with the Spirit of God, you are filled with wisdom. And you know how to honor, you know how to respect. A lot of time, I tell you, in our counseling of marriages, it's because either the, the husband not filled with the Spirit, or the wife not filled with the Spirit, or both not filled with the Spirit. And that's his stuff. So we say that you want your life to be blessed, get filled with the Spirit, and you'll be planted by the rivers. All right, the rivers. And you shall be called seas, I mean trees of righteousness. And they shall rebuild all rings, and they shall raise up the former desolation, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Which means to tell you, to, to tell you that what happened here, all the past glory, all the past victory that you have, God is going to restore to you manifold. Like Job like that. You know, Job, when he, when he went down and he was, he was tested, right? But yet, because he stood the test, and therefore, God going to bless him manifold. Some of you here, you, are, you have just come back to the Lord. You come back to the Lord, stay with the Lord. Some of you are new in the Lord. You are new in the Lord, then stay with the Lord. Because you know what? Whatever your life of destruction in the past, all the curses in the past, no more. The demonic spirit of sin that follow after you, that demonic spirit has been destroyed by the blood of the Lamb. Give the Lord a clap offering. Praise God. You are being set free right now. You don't need to go back to those sin. I met a, a brother in Christ. He told me, he said, God has delivered him from the desire to visit prostitutes. And he told me, he said, Pastor, I regret to tell you, in all my life, I actually behaved like a prostitute because I slept with 500 women and I paid them. Say prostitutes are smarter, they get paid. I'm, I'm stupid, I pay them. But he has been thoroughly safe and walking with the Lord. But who can set him free? Who could have set him free? I tell you, nothing but the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus. When the blood of Jesus applied to you and the Holy Spirit sustained you, you'll be set free. That's why every day we, we go to God and, and we go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in my heart. And be tender. Don't just sing because you love your own voice. Sing because you are singing to the Holy Spirit. And he says that all the desolation, all the walls that have been destroyed, all the fortresses that you built up have been destroyed. He says that he shall prepare the ruined cities. Cities means prosperity. Cities means it's a place of wealth. And all this shall come back to you. And even the desolation of many generations, which means to say that those sins of the past, whether it belongs to you or to your ancestors, all this shall be wiped off. Because you see, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And therefore, the oil of favor is telling you that the crown of beauty instead of ashes. When your life has been reduced to ashes, you think there's no more hope. But when you come back to Jesus, there is a lot of hope. A lot of hope. Oil of gladness instead of mourning. Garment of praise instead of despair. Rebuild the ancient ring, restore the places long devastated. What I'm trying to say to you is, today the Holy Spirit gives to you the principle and the law and the power of reversal. It's going to reverse everything. Any bad thing. Go, go ahead, go ahead and praise God. Go ahead and give a lot of big clap offering. I want you to get excited. When you hear the word of God, receive it, clap, and get excited. You, you see this, how you re receive God's word. Because... God's word is no use until you can apply it. God's word is 
floating in the air. You see, God's word, when it's sent to you, they are like nuggets of truth, golden nuggets floating in the air. It's up to you to grab. Today, some of you grab more, some of you grab less. If your whole being is full of something else, full of garbage, you cannot grab. Imagine you go to your mother with the bowl and you say, Mom, can you fill my bowl with rice? Mom, look at your bowl. How to fill your bowl with rice? When you got all the garbage inside. Right? You put all the rubbish inside. You put all the, the dog vomit all inside your, your bowl. And you expect your mother to put rice inside? You say, empty your bowl first. Empty your bowl first. Then I can fill in the rice. Same. Same with you. If you are filled with all bitterness, you know, you are very sensitive. People say one word, also you cannot stand. How many of you are like that? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I, have, I have seen, I have people, like, like I told you, you know, it's, it's most amazing. People walk by you and say, Hey, how are you? And then you say, I know you hope I die. Huh? When did I say, you? I hope you, you die? I just asked you, how are you? But you're, when you are filled with the negative spirit, when you're filled with evil spirit, when you're filled with the spirit that's downtrodden, you will think everything is bad. When people offer you coffee, you think it's like a poison. If no, no poison, you think people already put the spittle inside your, your coffee. Put, 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 put inside. Because you start to imagine things. You see, that is a bondage. But God is going to reverse, reverse, reverse. The favor of God, the oil of God's favor is going to reverse everything. All right. So through Jesus Christ, God sent the Holy Spirit to comfort you, to crown you, to give you gladness and praise, to renew and rebuild and restore your life. That is called the favor of God. This is a given. He will comfort you. He will crown you. And He will give you gladness and praise. I tell you, people who walk with the Holy Spirit have joy. Right? If sometimes you are driving and you smile to yourself, eh? not because you are cuckoo, because you have joy. Because you are thankful. You have a car to drive. All right? And you praise God, you know, that Malaysia give you the jam. So you are in the jam. All you need to do is provide bread and butter. You have a good breakfast. All right? So you thank God for that. And then he says, the year of the Lord's favor, this year is the year of God's favor in your life. Would you receive that? Yeah. Would you receive that? Yeah. You say, nobody can succeed for you and nobody can feel for you. If you say, I receive it, then 2018 is the year of the Lord's favor. I receive it. I receive it. I take it. The very moment I enter into 2018, even though I told my wife, honey, I haven't even enjoyed 2015. But 2018 came. Because 2016, we started this church. 2017, we worked very hard. And 2018 just came, right? But I receive it. I receive this as a year. And how do you receive it? Stay close to the source of all favors. And I stay close to Jesus Christ. Don't go away from Him. Satan doesn't like you. Every time when you sin against God, then Satan say, See? See? You sin again? You sin again? See? God, He doesn't like you anymore. So please go away. No. Say no. Because, yes, I sin again. But the Lord always provides a way to return. He said, if I confess my sin, He is faithful. He is just to forgive me of all my unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Because First John 1 John 1.9 is a verse for the Christian for the Christian this is not about salvation you see salvation is that if you don't accept Jesus Christ then you naturally will go to the way of first Adam first Adam means you go to hell right because first Adam come under the control of Satan so the ruler of this world is first Adam but when you give your life to the second Adam or the last Adam then what happened here is that Favor has come upon you. And therefore, First John 1 9 applies to you who are Christian. Means that you are not confessing to the judgment of God, you are confessing to the grace of God. Amen? You are confessing to the grace. Means I have grace and I can confess. I'm sorry, Lord. I make a mistake. 
I won't do it again. Let the Holy Spirit help me. When you open up to the Holy Spirit, He will help you. The Holy Spirit, like I told Brother uh, Thomas just now, and I said, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit doesn't budge into your life. The Holy Spirit comes invited. And the Holy Spirit doesn't control you in such a way that you cannot control yourself. If you want the Holy Spirit to go, He will go. He is a gentleman. All right? And so, I open my door and say, Holy Spirit, please come in. Please come in all the time. And so, let's go very quickly into some of the teaching here. Jesus is known as the man of the Spirit. If you read the Bible, and He says that, and I myself did not send Him. This is about John the Baptist. John the Baptist said that, I did not know who this man was. Uh, and the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So that when Jesus was being baptized, the dove, the symbol of the Holy Spirit came upon him. And the Bible says, the Holy Spirit came and remained. Remain. It didn't go away. It remains. It remains. And so if you understand how many of you, you read birds? You, you have read birds be, before? I'm not talking about your children. Huh? I'm talking about birds. No one read birds here? Only, ah, there, there. Okay. Brother Francis. Okay. When the bird is on your shoulder, what must you do? You walk very carefully. You walk with your whole attention upon that bird because you walk you know too fast you jump too high the bird is going to fly your whole focus is upon that dove your whole focus is upon the holy spirit you walk with that focus on the holy spirit then your life will be blessed and so he says jesus is the one not only who have the holy spirit but He is going to give you the Holy Spirit. Alright? That's why I came to Jesus. And so, Jesus Himself, full of the Holy Spirit, he, was, he left Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. Now, who led Him into the, into the desert? It was the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit wants to test you. Some of you are going through the wilderness. Some of you are like fasting for 40 days. And you are hungry, you are spiritually very dry, and you are wondering what happened. That is because the Holy Spirit is testing your faith. Amen. But He is with you. Though you can see Him, you can hear Him, you can, you can visualize Him, but He is there. He is always there. You know, someone wrote on the internet, and I like it. You see, every time when the student takes an examination, the teacher is quiet. Nice, isn't it? So you are taking an exam, Holy Spirit is quiet. He's not talking. And so you're feeling, oh. But can you trust even you don't feel? Some of us, we trust our feeling more than our understanding of the promises of God. Some of us don't understand that you don't need to feel to know that God is there with you. A mature Christian will not depend on feeling. I love feeling. Just now I worship. I enjoy the feeling. I enjoy the crying. But I don't have to. I don't have to. Because when you grow up to a certain point, I simply trust even if I don't feel. You see the point here? That's called maturity. And so, he was led to be tempted. But after temptation, look at verse 14. Same chapter. Jesus returned to Galilee. What? Let's read. In the power of the Spirit. And the news about Him spread throughout the whole countryside. You see, even though you go to testing, Holy Spirit never leave you. That's a given. You see the point here? That's why I want you to trust whether you feel or you don't feel. And then it says here, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him, anointed his oil with the Holy Spirit 
and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him what is happening here when you are filled with the Holy Spirit the first thing you're going to do is to do good nobody filled with the Holy Spirit and start to do evil things nobody put poison in the food of the boss even though you hope he dies <laughs> In fact, you start to pray for him and bless him. Okay? Yes. That's what happened. If you find goodness inside you, you find kindness coming out of you, you have the Holy Spirit. If you find evil thoughts, you find that all kinds of jealousy, envious, you know, and you, you find anger, you, you are always jealous of people, then uh, may I suggest you, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You've got evil spirit. You better come and see me. Yes. In our office, we cast out people like that. We, not people, we cast out demons like that. <laughs> Didn't cast out people. The people remain. Yes. That's why when you come to church office, you'll be very careful. There might be a lot of lingering evil spirit. They got nowhere to go. I always command them to go to the, mom, the mama store. <laughs> yes. Because we got mama store here, mama store here. But you see what happened here is that you check your spirit. If your spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit, kindness must flow. Simple. Simple. Passion. Compassion. Passion and compassion. If you don't have compassion, something is missing. Two days ago when I prayed and I asked God, I said, God, my compassion is depleting. I said, I, my, confession, my compassion for people are not so strong anymore and i came before god and i said fill me with your compassion and i thank god that you know the presence came the presence came there will be time that you don't feel very loving there will be time that you hope everybody just disappear but don't let the compassion of god come okay so there'll be healing miracle will happen anybody oppressed by the devil they will be set free. So I say to you, when Jesus comes, He doesn't want to educate you about the Holy Spirit. He wants to impart to you about the Holy Spirit, right? He wants to impart to you Holy Spirit. Therefore, we say the anointing of the Holy Spirit does not come through education, but through impartation. That's why later on, we are going to lay hands on you. The pastors are going to lay hands on you. We are going to have olive oil. And we are going to anoint you with olive oil if you want you don't want never mind huh? but you want you come forward we're going to anoint you with olive oil and this will be the symbol of the holy spirit whatever that's done outside may the lord do something inside amen right that this anointing comes this symbol will connect to the deeper work of the holy spirit in your life and that's what we want this church every one of you to enjoy that and very quickly and without the spirit of god we can do nothing we are a sheep without wind branches without sap and like coal without fire, we are useless. Charles Spurgeon is known as the Prince of Preachers. And when he said this, I said, Wow, I got to put this in and show you. All right. So for John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That is a promise of Jesus. For the church to function, it got to have the Holy Spirit. And so he says in Acts 1:8, say, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That's also a promise. Impartation of the Holy Spirit for the kingdom work. And he says here, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began what speaking in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability means you will, will begin to speak in divine tongues. You'll be unknown tongues. Only God can understand you. Nobody can understand you. And then uh, the Bible also says in 1 John 2.20, they say, but you have an anointing. The only two entities that has anointing. One is Jesus Christ, the anointed one. The second one is you, the church. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, automatically you are known as the anointed church. You have the anointing. But because you don't know, you don't use. And you keep going to many meetings, right? You, you go and find many pastors and say, Pastor, lay hand on me, right? Some people, they go to every meeting, you know. 
any meeting in town. Preacher from India, la, Africa, la, from China, la, from America. They want them to lay hand, lay hand, lay hand. I want the anointing. anointing. You already have the anointing. All right? Let me tell you why you don't feel the anointing. You don't feel the anointing because maybe some area of the divine gifts are not being activated. Divine gifts are given. Now, take note of this. Divine gifts are given to people with a mission. Take note of this again. Divine gifts are given to people with a mission. If you don't have a mission in the kingdom of God, you don't need those gifts. And if you don't accept the mission and the assignment of God, God will not give you those gifts. You can cry out all that you want, but because first, the key to receiving the gifts will be the assignment. What is the assignment of God? God has assigned each one of us with a job, with a work. Definitely, every one of us, we have an assignment. Small or big, we have an assignment. But because we do not accept the assignment or we have the wrong view of ourselves because we look at ourselves we depend on ourselves our ability and we come to pastor and say pastor you know i am not so smart i'm not so good who 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 say about you it's nothing about you it's not whether you are smart or you are good or you are clever or you you got a phd or whatever my big question is are you a true receptacle or a true container whereby the Holy Spirit can come. If you allow this, then I know you have an anointing. And I know that the gift shall be expressed. And then the assignment shall be very clear. If I don't have an anointing to preach, imagine if I don't want to preach, I just every day enjoy watching Korean movie. You think the gift of preaching is going to come to me? It's not going to come to me. You see the point here? Because that is, the assignment is connected to the gifts. So God will give you that gift. All right, let me go very quickly. Okay, the first point, uh, no, after all this, just now, I- introduction. Okay, <laughs> now the first point is that God gives you favor of guidance. And He says here, but when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Huh? Into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is still going to happen. So what is the Holy Spirit job? The favor of God is to provide the Holy Spirit to guide you. The very moment you say, Lord, I want to follow, he will guide you. Let me say this again. You say, Lord, I want to follow. He will guide. God will never guide anyone who doesn't want to follow. Right? Even for us who are spiritual mentors. I mentor pastors. Yeah? Young pastors. If young pastors refuse to follow, I won't guide. I will keep my mouth shut. Because you do not respond to what I teach. You see, God gives you mentor is to prevent you from hitting your head against the wall. Experience is a hard master. But mentor is somebody who is gentle. He has already knocked his head on the wall. So he tell you, don't go there and knock your head on the wall. So you, it's either you learn by experience or you learn by advice. God put us as mentors so that we can advise you. You don't have to fall down to know it's painful. Am I right? How many of you, you know, when I, when I, when I help the drug addicts huh, in, the, in a center, the drug addict asked me, Hey, brother, have you taken drugs now? I said, no. you never taken drugs. How, how you help us? I said, don't be stupid. I don't have to fall down to know it's painful, right? Must I get fall down and say, ah, painful, then I can't help. No, you can see the result of drugs. You can see, and many of you can see the result of godlessness. You can see the result whereby people don't care about God and how their life end up in failures. 
You can see that. And you can see people who have God in spite of the fact that financially they may not be as rich as you, but they got peace that is beyond understanding. Peace is something you cannot buy, right? Peace is imparted. Peace is given to you. When you lay your bitterness at the foot of the cross, peace is placed into your heart. I put this on my Facebook. You can go there and read. Exactly that. Because I felt that's the way. When you lay your bitterness and your hatred and all your selfishness, self-centeredness, you know, you are the king of the world, you know. Like that movie, king of the world. Yeah. Lay, on, lay, lay that off. You'll be set free. You'll be set free. Praise God. And therefore, you find, guide you to all truth. He will make divine will known to you. You will know the will of God. Confirmation. You will receive confirmation. What God wants you to do. And He will reveal impending event, things of the future to you. God is telling us this church is going to be a church whereby we provide platforms for people to have ministries. One pastor asked me, Oh, you're just so new. Two years, you have so many pastors. You enjoy appointing pastors, oh? <laughs> I don't enjoy appointing pastors. But I have to have young pastors whom I can train. Because Albert Kang is not going to be here forever. Ten years later, I'll be 74. Though I still look like 35. <laughs> Ten years. No, 25, 25. Yeah. But if I don't train you, who will train you? The 30 years of experience as a pastor will be wasted if I do not train you. But may I say to you, if you don't receive it, I can't train you. See the point here? A lot of things are caught, not taught. You've got to catch it. You've got to catch it. All right, very quickly. Favor of help. Next one. Is that when the helper... Come, let's all read. Help me. One, two, three, go. But when the helper, comforter, advocate intercessor, counsellor, strengthener, standby, comes whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, He will testify and bear witness about me. That is John 15, 26, the very word of Jesus. He described the Holy Spirit as the helper. The Holy Spirit is going to help you because you are weak. That's why when the word says to you is that when you are weak, you become strong. How come? Because the Holy Spirit can help you. So look at these 10 points here. The first five, He's a helper. The second one is com comforter. When you are feeling depressed, when you are feeling down, when your faith is shaking, He comforts you. All right? American, they have this bed sheet called comforter. So, so you go underneath the comforter. But really, it means that somebody who comes alongside, a paraclete, means that somebody who come alongside and to help you, somebody to assist you. When you are down and you are tired, and somebody come and carry your arm, you know, and hold your arm. Advocate means somebody who is a lawyer. He will fight your case for you. And then intercessor, he will pray for you. Let me tell you one, one thing. If I know that Jesus is in the next room, praying for me, I will fear nobody. Amen? But today, Jesus said, He is praying for you. The Word of God. He promised to pray for you. So all of you here, you think nobody pray for you. You say, oh, nobody. I'm nobody's child. I'm no Nonsense. Jesus prayed for you. The Bible says He prays for you. Every moment. Because he keeps you safe from the devil, he prays for you. So I don't need Jesus next door. I know in my heart, he prays for me. Amen? Amen. And therefore, he counselor. Counselor means what? Wisdom. He gives you in the midst of confusion, in the midst whereby, you know, business kind of a, a situation, problem come and bill can be paid. And then in the midst of all this, suddenly wisdom comes and you have an answer. In the midst of a relational tension, wisdom comes, you have an answer. Every problem in our church, we say, every problem is a wisdom problem. If you have a health problem, it's also a wisdom problem because you haven't been exercising. Eat too much durian. You begin to look like durian also. Yeah? So you need to exercise. Yeah? So, 
every problem is a what? Is a what? Wisdom, wisdom problem. Okay, look at the strengthen, um, the strengthener means someone who gives you strength. The standby means that there's someone who is always guarding you. Always down there. Standing by. You look around. Oh, he's here. You look around. He's here. He's all around you. In fact, the Lord says, I surround you like the shield of favor. Right? So, remember the two weeks, I say you feel that He's all around you. He's all around because He's standby. And He's a spirit of truth. When you are confused by lies, you go to Him, He will give you the truth. When you need a, a He will make you, He will make you into a witness because He Himself witnessed of Christ. He will tell you what Jesus did. And He will tell you what Jesus is doing. So He is not just a witness of the past, but He's a testifying of the praise reports. All the good things are going to happen. Today, many of you here, at the end of the service, you're going to be healed. Amen? You want to give a lot of clap offering? Yep. To those of you who are here for the very first time, this man here is a recipient of the healing of God. If it's not by the miracle of God, I can't stand in front of you. I got chronic back pain caused by anger losing spondylitis. And my doctor in America said, cannot be healed. In fact, he said, when you reach 60, you most probably will be confined to a wheelchair. And today, where is the wheelchair? Not even the wheel or the screw or the whatever is there. Nothing. Because there is a Jesus. Amen. Give a lot of clap. So you receive. You receive your healing. Don't listen to the doctor. Doctor tell you a lot of sad things. Oh, you don't have many days to live already. Oh. You are going to go home tong tong chiang now. And you say, <laughs> we have so many cases whereby people, doctor tell them you've got six months to live and this guy, six years, is still kicking around. Why? Because he believed in the promise of God. Amen? So, very quickly, the last one is called favor of empowerment and that you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And so, these things are going to happen to you. Supernatural power, witnesses to Christ, kingdom purpose, worldwide mission. When you have a purpose, the power must come. In the last 12 years, the Lord gave us power and authority to heal the sick. All right. Some 10,000 cases through our hands. How come? Because there was an assignment and there is still an assignment. And I believe that when we lay hands on you and all the other pastors and leaders lay hands on you, miracle must happen. Because the anointing is in the body. The anointing is in the body of Christ. Amen? So all these three things must happen here. I want you to take note of this. Favor of guidance, favor of help, and favor of empowerment. This is going to happen right now. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'd like you to bow your heads and close your eyes to receive right now whatever God gives to you. And if you feel that you say, Pastor, I want... I really want the oil of anointing. I want the oil of favor upon my life. And I want whatever God has for me. That's your sincere desire. Not because I ask you, but because you really want. Can you just stand up where you are? Just stand up where you are. Yeah, just stand up. Wow, just stand. Yeah, 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 just stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 